talking about is the modern way in which we're doing cost accounting for the production of products or services. Now this is this is a whole new way of looking at things. And it leads to my next lecture, which Wednesday is called activity based management. And I want to introduce that to you later. But right now we're talking about a change in management and the way we accumulated costs and assigned costs to our product. That's what a cost accumulation system is. We first of all accumulate the cost, direct material, direct labor and overhead, and then we assign it to the product. And Mafi Muskila with direct material, direct labor, Muskila with overhead, indirect costs. So therefore the job costing system in today's management lingo is called a traditional costing system. Activity-based costing is a more sophisticated costing system. Why? Because of the advent of computers, we can track a lot more data at the same time. So I'm going to go through why we moved or why we've evolved. We haven't moved. There's many companies that still do job costing. No problem. But big manufacturers now and flexible manufacturers uh, are moving to activity based costing. And we're going to go through the difference of those two. Then we're going to identify the steps that you must go through to develop an activity based costing system. And you're going to know how these how we use what's called and the language. We're talking a lot of language here now. You're going to learn what an activity cost pool is. All right. And an activity cost driver. These are new terms in management. Then alas, we're going to understand the limitations and then we're going to talk about uh, value added, non value added. So this is our thrust today. Learn and understand the activity based costing system. Now, to get back to what we did last time, they're called traditional costing systems. And that's called that because they were job order costing and we're still talking basically job order costing, but they were traditional because they allocated overhead based on a predetermined overhead rate. I demonstrated that with job order costing. I could have demonstrated another one with process costing, but you got the idea that the costs were indirect. That is, I don't, I'm not able to measure exactly how much electricity costs, rent costs, supervisors costs went into the production of my product. I just know they were necessary to produce my product, so I lumped them into a category called manufacturing overhead, one category. And it was in, and that was all the indirect manufacturing costs. And then I said to myself, or I said, to me, how do I allocate all these indirect costs directly to the product? Well, I needed a direct allocation base. And the direct allocation base already existed. I was keeping track of um, direct labor costs. I was keeping track of direct labor hours. And in some cases, I would keep in track of machine hours. So I'm going to use one of those three ways to allocate. Now, my overhead is a million, and I estimate that at the beginning of the year in a job order costing and process costing. And then I select if I am a labor intensive business, which means I use a lot of direct labor to manufacture my product, I will allocate the overhead either on direct labor costs or direct labor hours. If I'm a capital intensive company, which means I use a lot of machine and less labor, then I'll allocate it based on direct labor, uh, I'm sorry, machine hours. In any case, I needed a direct allocation base to assign the million dirhams in manufacturing over cost. That million was incurred to manufacture all the products I manufactured during the year. So I want to assign to each product a fair share of that overhead. So bigger products would pick up a bigger amount if they use more labor or more machine hours. That was the idea. 
And that assumption was satisfactory up until the last 25 years. When direct labor was a major portion of the manufacturing costs. Why? Because there was a high correlation between the amount of direct labor that went into the production of this desk and the overhead costs. More labor, the desk was bigger, it used more energy, it used more everything else. So that was the way it was done in those days. Okay, the good old days. <laughs> But now, because there's been a tremendous change in manufacturing and in service industries, the amount of direct labor has gone down. You see that? You go get your McDonald's hamburger. They're replacing those poor servers with a machine at the front. Do you see that? Exchanging direct labor for uh, machines. That's just a simple example that you have seen Anytime you go to Kentucky Fried Chicken now or in the mall or McDonald's. So you see they're reducing labor and incurring more uh, indirect costs, significant increase in overhead costs. So back to my day when I said this desk cost 100 to produce. 40 material, 40 labor, and 20 overhead. Today, this same desk, if it's produced with a lot of equipment, 40% still material, but maybe only 20% labor and 40% overhead. So you see that overhead is indirect. And if we're way out, like assigning it based on direct labor, direct labor is a small part of the cost of the product now. So we have a problem here. Okay, it's inappropriate the way we were doing it to use a plant wide determination rate like five germs a machine hour because it doesn't really capture the actual consumption of that indirect labor. And that is because we have complex manufacturing processes. And therefore, what we're going to do is expand the allocation base. For example, the old way we had one overhead cost pool. I said a million. And we had one way to assign that cost in that pool, or I'm sorry, in that category to the product. And we chose either direct labor hours or direct labor dollars or machine hours. So we had one accumulation of the costs, as you know, we're going to call them pools now, and one way to assign them. So because of complex manufacturing now, what we have to do is break that one million pool into a number of activity cost pools and then assign those pools by means of a cost driver. So you have two new terms here, activity cost pools and activity cost drivers. And I'll explain as we go. Now, first of all, definitions, activity. An activity is any event, action, transaction, or work sequence, most often a work sequence, that causes a cost to be incurred in producing a product or providing a service. An activity cost pool is a distinct type of activity. For example, ordering materials or setting up machines. And a cost driver is that activity that has a direct cause and effect relationship with resources consumed, okay? So basically, I'm gonna take the million dirhams of indirect manufacturing overhead in my plant now, and I'm gonna break it into activities. I'm gonna say, how much of that indirect overhead cost is rent and heat 
or our AC? Well, we would say those are capacity costs. Oh, okay. How much is that? Oh, that's about 200,000. Okay. Separate that out of the million. I have a 200,000 now activity pool, uh, which is uh, capacity costs. How much of that million are electrical costs? Oh, 100,000. Okay, that's a separate pool. How much of that is supervisory costs? Oh, 200,000. Okay, that's another pool. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> we're taking a million now, <clears throat> and we're looking at all the activities that are carried out that have caused these indirect costs to be uh, incurred. And instead of leaving them in that one big million Durham pool, we're breaking them into three or four pools. Then we say supervisory costs, 200,000. What drives supervisory costs? The number of employees. Okay, we're going to assign the allocation base is going to be not direct material or not direct labor, not direct labor hours. Not, it's going to be the number of employees. All right. What drives the costs in capacity costs like rent and AC and that? I say, oh, it's square feet. If this product takes more square feet, it should pick up more of that cost. So you see what we're trying to do. We break the activities into pools and then we look at cost drivers. Now, this may be clear. Oh, okay. We're going to get into the definitions first. So sign up and let's make sure we understand the concepts here. And then we'll go on. Only seven players. Come on, I want 15 anyway. 20. I can get 20. I'd like that. 25 would be optimal. All right, looks like we're on 15. Question number one. In traditional costing system, overhead is generally applied based on direct labor, units of product, direct material dollars. Three, two, one, and everybody should have this. Oh, no, it's not units of production. It's a sign based on either direct labor hours, direct labor dollars, or machine hours. Make sure you understand that. That's job costing. We use only one allocation base. Overhead is generally applied based on either direct labor hours, direct labor dollars, or machine hours. That was disappointing. I thought everybody get direct labor. All right, an activity that has a direct cause and effect relationship with resources consumed, it's called a cost driver, a cost pool, overhead rate. Oh my goodness, you're not getting the definitions. Oh my God. Five, five, and five. Five think it's an overhead rate. There's no direct and effect relationship. The overhead is the resources consumed, the indirect cost. There are in different pools, yeah, but the way I assign them to the products now is based on the product's use of the cost driver because the cost driver as you will see, is going to be an activity that is related, direct cause and effect relationship to what's in the pool. So make sure you get these definitions correct, concepts. Costs that are easiest to, to trace to direct to products are direct labor and overhead, Direct material and direct labor. Direct materials and overhead. Mm. 
Yeah. Good. 11 of you. Direct material and direct labor. That's traditional. And that continues on. Even when we go into activity-based costs, we're still going to track direct material and direct labor. Activity-based costing relates to what we do with the indirect costs. It's not the direct costs. All right, so now your introduction to what's called activity-based costs. ABC allocates overhead in two stages. One, we accumulate them into activity cost pools. I already started to give you an example of that when I talked about supervisory costs, electricity costs, capacity costs. Step two, we then figure out what the cost driver, what drives the cost in that pool? That is, if that activity increases, will the cost increase? If the answer is yes, then that means that that activity drives the cost. What I mean by drive, is if I perform that activity more, the total cost in that pool will go up. Now, the more complex a product's operation, the more activities and cost drivers are like. Yes, I have worked with implementing activity-based costing, and I've seen some systems that were kind of ridiculous. They had 50 pools and 50 overhead rates. But we're going to keep it simple. You don't want to get that complicated. Here it is, an example, and it would make it better for you to understand. Look at that gray area, it says overhead costs. Now, in traditional costing, that was our million dirhams. And we assigned it based on direct labor or hours or direct labor dollars. But here, we break that overhead costs into four. We look at the overhead, how much of the overhead costs are related to purchasing and receiving a product? Ordering, purchasing, and receiving a product. Oh, okay, well, we'll separate that out. We'll call it the purchasing activity cost pool. And it'll be 200. How much of those overhead costs relates to storing the inventory, either the raw material, the uh, finished goods inventory? I have different products here. Not all products keep, uh, consume the same storing space. Oh, that's 150. Okay, we put that into a pool. How much of the overhead costs relate to machining? I'm talking about machining depreciation, lubrication of the machinery, setting up of the machinery, electricity that drives the machinery, and so on. I accumulate all those costs, and their overhead costs are all indirect manufacturing costs. But I say, how much are related to the machining process? By that, I mean the number of machines, the depreciation on the number of machines. That's an indirect cost. Uh, the ele electricity to drive those machines, the lubrication of those machines, and so on. And so I get that to be 400,000, let's say. And then I say, okay, how much of those overhead costs are indirect labor like supervisory? Okay, now I've got, instead of a million, I got four pools, each with a couple of hundred thousand in it. That total a million, they all total a million. I just broke that out of there. Then I go back to purchasing and I say, okay, what drives the cost in purchasing? Well, it's the number of purchase orders. We're ordering so many parts for this product, so many parts for that product over there. Every time I initiate a purchasing order, I have to send that order to a supplier, get the supplier to deliver it, then I have to receive it and make sure it's all hunky-dory. So the number, more purchase orders, more times I perform that activity. What's storage? Well, storage is square feet. So if this product takes up more square feet of the other, this product, obviously, this is simple enough, should take up more of the cost of storing. Machining, well, of course, number of machine hours. That's the activity. The more machine hours one product takes than the other, the more the machining costs it should pick up. And supervisory, the number of employees. 
So you see now I have four pools and I have four cost drivers. Now I look at my two products. I have an AB bench, which is simple. If you've done any exercise now, you just put your feet under there and you do chin-ups or sit-ups. Or I have an AB coaster, which is a lot more complicated, more parts, okay? More assembly costs, stuff like that. And then I look and I say, okay, AB bench, how many purchase orders would there be in a, a year? Well, I've got the number of purchase orders and I got that. I say, okay, the purchasing is gonna be 150,000 a year and there's gonna be 50,000 purchase orders. So for every purchase order, it's going to be three terms, a purchase order. How many purchase orders for the bench in a year? Well, that would be 25,000. Okay, so 75,000 of this cost go to the bench. How many purchases orders over here? Oh, 80,000. Okay, 80 times, what did I say, five? 400,000 goes here. And so now I look at the consumption that each product has of each pool, and that consumption is expressed in the amount of the activity driver. How many machine hours to produce this one over here? Well, machine hours were 400,000. I think I'm gonna do 400,000 machine hours a year, so that's a Durham a machine hour. This one over here takes 50, this one over here takes 90. And I assign that cost to these products based, indirect costs, these are all indirect costs, based on the activity the product consumed of the cost drivers. Now look at the cost drivers. Number of purchase orders is an activity. Uh, the square footage, the machine hours, the number of employees. And that's how I do it. Now here's a more extensive example of activity. And we're gonna go through a number of these problems so you get the idea. In this case, we have the overhead, which remember the accountant estimates the overhead at the beginning of the year. 2 million. And that's not difficult for the accountant to do because he knows what they pay for rent and basically AC and everything else last year. These costs are fixed costs. So it's not hard for him to come up. He'd be pretty close to 2 million, let's say. But what's more difficult now is to look down at those costs and say, how many of those costs are ordering and receiving materials? And we figure out how many of them are. How much is setting up machines? That is paying the guy, the engineer, to get up in those machines and change the knives or change something in those machines. How much is, uh, what's that? Machining cost pool. How much is assembly? How much is inspection? How much is painting? Blah, blah, blah. So now I've took in the, taken the two million and I broke it into three, six, seven, pools. Then I look and I say, okay, number of purchase orders is a cost driver for this category. Number of setups during the year is a cost driver for this one. Number of machine hours is, drives the cost. The more machine hours, the more costs. So machine hours is a cost driver. Uh, number of parts, if we're doing assembly, the more complicated product has more parts. Inspecting and testing, the more complicated product would have more inspecting and testing, so it's the number of tests. Um, oh, what's that, painting, okay, again, number of parts. And lastly, supervisory. So you get the idea that instead of having one big pool and one driver like direct labor hours or direct labor dollars, we have many pools and many drivers. So we come up with different rates for each pool. Oh, the coffee's getting full. So activity-based costing involves, first of all, taking all the overhead costs you identify those overhead costs involved in manufacturing a specific product and allocate and then break those overhead costs into cost pools. Then identify the cost driver. 
What is that activity that has a strong correlation to the cost accumulated in each cost pool? So now you got the pool, 150,000, and you got the cost driver machine hours, and it's uh, 50,000. So now you have not a predetermined overhead rate, it's the same idea as predetermined overhead rate we had in job costing, but we called this the activity-based overhead rate. And it's the same thing, only it's an overhead rate for every activity. And then we track the number of times that activity is performed on this product, the number of times on that product, and we assign the overhead cost based on the activity-based overhead rate times the number of times that activity was performed. And in that way, we get a closer match between the indirect manufacturing overhead and the actual direction of the cost. All right, a few more just to see if you're awake still. Which best describes the flow of overhead costs in activity-based costing system? Now, be careful. Overhead costs to direct labor costs or hours to produce. Overhead costs to activity cost pools, to cost drivers, to products. No, only nine answered, okay. But six of you have it right. No, no. Overhead costs, divide those overhead costs into activity cost pools, figure out what the driver is, get a activity-based overhead rate or driver rate and assign it to products, good. The question, okay, number five. Advances in computerized systems, technological innovation, and automation have changed the manufacturing advice, uh, environment directly, drastically, sorry, by decreasing direct labor costs and increasing overhead costs, or decreasing direct labor costs and increasing overhead costs. Again, six people got it right. I don't know. You've got to get this wrapped around your head. Activity-based costing. All right, let's see if you can do better in the next question. Now, of the 17 people, only nine people are participating. Yeah, Yosef, I'd be angry too. Activity-based costing. Assigns activity cost pools to products, then allocates overhead to activity cost pools. Allocates overhead to many activity cost pools. Assign the pools to products by cost driver. Good, you're getting it, you're getting it, you're getting it. That's number. Allocates overhead costs to a bunch of pools figures out what the driver is and assigns the cost in that pool based on the consumption of the driver. All right, I'm gonna go through two examples here. First one, to show you the difference between ABC and traditional costing. I think you can see with computers that we can do this a lot more effectively. You have no idea what it was like before computers, so. <laughs> I use pencil and paper. This makes it a lot easier. All right, we got a company called Atlas, and it produces two products, and you saw them before, the abdominal trainer and the, uh, what do you call that thing? The bench, the coaster and the bench, sorry. Now, what they do is they produce 30,000 units of both. 25,000 of the bench and 5,000 of the coaster. And they know that each product, each bench and each coaster only takes one hour of direct labor. And therefore the annual direct labor for the year is only 30,000 direct labor hours. And we're going to assign 
unit based on labor hours. Therefore, the direct labor cost per unit is $12 for each product because each product takes one hour and the labor cost is $12. So therefore, the direct labor cost per unit for product. Annual production, that is overhead costs, all the other costs besides direct material and direct labor are indirect and that's 900,000. Now, when it comes to materials, so I have the labor cost at 12, I have the overhead in total 900, and I have direct material costs, the bench 40, and A, B, coaster 30. Calculate the cost under A, B, C, and the cost under traditional. Well, let's first look at traditional costing. Traditional costing. All right, I track the material 40 for the Bench, 30 for the coaster. Direct labor, 12 and 12. And the overhead is 30, okay? Because it takes, uh, wait a minute, what is it? The overhead is 30. How did I get the 30? I took the 900,000 and I divided it by the number of direct labor hours. So I'm assigning it based on one direct labor hour is 30. So I say that my bench is 82 and my coaster 72. Now, if I had a markup of 100%, I would sell the bench then at 144. And I would sell the coaster at 134. That would be my selling price. These are my costs to produce. That I come up with in the traditional way. Uh, but, now, the ABC way, I take a look at that 900,000. And I break it into three pools. 300 is related to setup. So keeping this simple, of course. 500 related to machining, 100. So I've got my 900,000 broken into three activity-based pools. I then look at what drives the cost in the setup machines, number of setups. Okay, Mr. Production Man, how many times am I going to change the machines over in a year? Oh, maybe 1,500 times. Okay. Machining, what drives that? Machine hours, that's simple enough. So I'm the accountant, I say, okay, Mr. Production Man, how many machine hours are we going to use to produce all the products we're going to do in the coming year? He says 50,000. Inspecting, I go to the inspector, same thing, I get 2,000. So now I have the activity cost pools, I have the activity cost driver, and I have the amount in each of these, or I have the amount in each of these pools, and I have the activity use of that. That's the number of times. So the next step is to get the activity-based overhead rate. And that's just like our predetermined overhead rates in the last chapter. It's the estimated overhead per the activity divided by the estimated use of that cost driver. Back to this. Estimated cost, 300,000. It's going to be 15 times. So every time there's a setup, a change up between one, one product, I change the machines over from one product to another, it's going to be 200. And I'm going to charge it to the machine, to the product I'm, I'm changing over to. The number of machine hours, they set 500,000 for the year, 30,000 machine hours, $10 machine hour. So I keep track of how many machine hours is done for one product versus the other. Or I figure that out. Inspection, I get 50. Okay? So you see, it's just a lot of number crunching here. You line the ducks up. Activity-based cost pool, the estimated overhead, the expected use of the driver. You got the drivers here and set up machine hours. Expected use of that activity, you get the activity-based overhead rate. Now, you go back and you say, okay, What's the expected use of the cost driver for the bench when it comes to setups? Well, it's not as complicated as the coaster. It's usually, so 500 times we're going to move over to the bench and 1,000 times for the coaster. 
What about machine hours? Now, this is strange. I would think there would be more machine hours on the coaster than the bench. But this is just a, math, a demonstration here. The AB bench takes 30 machine hours. I don't know why. AB coaster less. And then inspecting. Well, of course, the coaster is more complicated. It has more parts, more complicated, more inspections. So now I've got the use of the cost driver. So now I'm going to take the overhead costs and allocate them to the bench and the coaster based on the activity they consume to produce that for the whole year. This is for the whole year. So we go back to the bench and we say, okay, look, here's my three cost pools, setup machine, machining, and inspecting. Here's the expected use, 500 times. Here's the cost in that activity pool. So 100,000 of that overhead cost is set up machines for the bench. I do the same with machining. 300,000 of those overhead costs are the machine, are the total overhead costs related to the bench. 25,000 to inspecting. So of the 900,000 overhead costs, 425 is related to the bench. And I'm gonna produce 25,000. Therefore, the overhead costs every time I produce a bench is 17. All right, now I go to the coaster, I do exactly the same thing. The rates are the same. The activity-based rates are the same, but the expected use of the cost driver, it being more complicated, would use more of the cost drivers. And 475 of them, 1,000 of the 900, would be related to the coaster. I produce 5,000 coasters. Therefore, the overhead cost per unit of coaster that I produce is 95. All right, so now I've got my direct material. I got my direct labor and I got my overhead. Now, the traditional way of doing it was this. 82 was the cost of the bench. 72 was the cost of the coaster. Well, look what happened. The bench, I said, cost me 82 by traditional thing. But by ABC, materials the same, labor is the same, but the activity is 17, not 30. So I overstated the cost of uh, the bench. And by the same token, I understated the cost of the coaster. For the coaster, I was going to be selling it at 144. Remember, but it actually cost me 137 to produce. So a major, you see, this is what happens. The more complicated a product, the more under cost it is. And that's the case here. So a major problem with that. That's activity-based costing. Yes. This 13 and 65, where did they come from? Pardon? 30? Uh, the previous slide, the 13 and 65, where did they come from? I'm sorry, the 13? Oh, no, that's the difference between traditional costing. I said it cost me 82, it also cost me 69. So I overstated by 13. I was high by $13. Here, I'm under by 65. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, it's just the difference. Okay. It just shows you that when we have a number of different products and one product's more complex than the other, if we use the traditional way, product that's more complex is always understated. It actually consumes more overhead than the traditional costing. Traditional costing says it consumes $30 in overhead. ABC says, ah, ha, ha, no. It costs 95 in overhead. Therefore, we really misprice the production of our products. All right, any questions? I'll go through one more example. 
So you, once you get this set up in your mind, and we're going to do some problems, and it's important that you go through the problems with me to understand how you get this set up. Casey Company has five activity cost pool and two products. Now, many companies have more than two products. They have four or five products. Some are more complicated than others. But to keep it simple here, we're using five pools and two products. It expects to produce 230 units of scissors jack automobile and 80,000 of truck hydraulic jacks. That's for lifting trucks. Having identified its activity cost pools and cost drivers, Casey accumulated the following data. Here we go. Activity cost pools were figured to be ordering and receiving, machining setup, and they always have to give you these pools. Uh, painting and assembly and inspection. Now, what are the cost drivers? That's what you have to figure out. And in this case, they give you the cost drivers. Now, the overhead, the total overhead was 5,300, and we broke it into these five pools, broke it down to these five pools. Then we estimate the use of the cost driver for e in total, 250 orders, 2,500 orders. 1,000 will be jack, 1,500 will be hydraulic. Okay, hydraulic would be more complicated. Uh, setups, uh, number of hours, machining hours, is that it? 300 for the jack, 500 for the hydraulic. All right assemblies, so on. So now I've got all of that. Prepare a schedule and come up with it. Well, here, if we take a look at it, up in the green part, we have the information we just had on the other side. Now we're going to prepare a schedule. Well, the first thing we need is the activity-based overhead rate. We don't have that. But that's simple. You simply take the estimated overhead, 200,000, and the estimated use of the activity, 2,500 orders, and you come up with $80 per order. You have to do this bit by bit by bit. So then to get the machining, no, to get the machining setup costs, you take the estimated overhead in a pool, 600, and divide it by the number of setups. In this case, 1,500, so you're going to get 500 per setup. And in that way, you develop an activity-based overhead rate for each of these activities. Now, this is the number of times the activity is going to be performed for scissors jack. So we simply go back and multiply the number of times by the cost per order. This is going to be for the hydraulic. And that's all you do with it. You set it up, and it's easy. You can see the use of Excel. <clears throat> That's what you do. On the left is the scissors jack. So it's going to be a 1,000 times I perform this. $80 is the rate. Now, the rate is the same here for scissors jack as it is for hydraulic. The rate doesn't change because that's the overhead rate for the whole year. And then I assign 1,000 times 80, 80,000 for ordering and receiving. 250 for machine setup and each of the pools. So of the 5,300,000, I'm saying 2,560,000 is related to the scissors jack and the rest is related to the hydraulic jack. 2,740. Now we produce 200,000 scissors jack. So the overhead rate, you remember I got the direct material, I got the direct labor, the overhead rate now is $12.80. Now, that is assigned to each unit. It's assigned based on that unit's consumption of the activities, the indirect cost activities to produce it. For the jack, it's $34.25, okay? So there you can see the overhead cost by hydraulic jack is high than it is the scissors jack. Whereas if I assign this based on direct labor hours, I would have gotten a whole complete different thing. 
Now, I'm not taking the actual hours. I'm, I took for each activity, I took the activity based overhead rate, multiplied it by the activity. That's the difference. You see, in traditional job costing, I was assigning the overhead to the product based on one driver, if you will, direct labor or direct labor hours. Here now I have five different activity drivers. Purchase orders is one activity driver. Set up is another machine hours, parts and tests. So the whole thinking has changed. That is we are costing overhead. Okay, we're looking at, we're not costing the product right now, we're costing the indirect activity that caused the cost to be incurred. The more that activity, the more the total cost. So that's what we're doing. We, with job costing, we trace that overhead cost to the product and use direct memory. And activity-based costing, we are using a number of activity-based rates. What we do is we assign the overhead, not to the product as we did in traditional costing, we assign it to activities. So we're costing activities. And that's the new thrust actually in management. Now the benefits of ABC, yeah, we have more accurate product costing because we're using more cost pools to assign the overhead. Therefore, we have better cost control over the pools and we have better decisions. Now we realize that the number of times uh, a product is moved from one area to another, they incur a cost. So if we can cut down on the number of times an activity is performed on the shop floor, on the production area, then we can cut down on the cost. That's a whole new thing in management. In management, before, the indirect costs were there, overhead. We couldn't manage them. We didn't think of managing them. We simply assign them. But now that we're costing activities, you understand what I'm saying? Now that management is able to cost the activities and say, okay, the number of times I perform this activity increases the number of costs in that pool. Well, can I cut down on the number of times? One example, it's just in time inventory. If I need a part, one of the overhead costs I have is storage, right? I used to receive that, order that part, receive the part and store it until I needed it. La, now we know that storage costs us money. We say, let's get rid of that cost as much as we can, just in time, reduce the amount of storage space we need. And that's the way management has been changing. This is what's led to, I don't know how familiar you are, many of you are actually, it led to lean manufacturing. Anybody heard of lean manufacturing? Yes. Okay, good. I did my doctorate on Six Sigma manufacturing. Now that 25 years ago was brand new. But this has all led to a different way of managing. Now that I can assign the cost to the activity, hey man, I can reduce the number of times I perform that activity, I'm gonna reduce the total costs. So that's where I'm getting at when I talk about activity-based management, which is Wednesday's class. But limitations of ABC, it's expensive, yeah. It's involved, I, I got involved in a couple of uh, implementations of ABC, it takes a long time. And the problem too is it's still arbitrary. That means the number of times that activities can perform is a guess, all right? The total overhead cost estimated at the beginning of the year is an estimate. The number of times that activity is gonna be performed in total is an estimate. The number of times it'll be performed for this product versus that, it's all estimates. So I'm still, in the area of dealing with uh, arbitrary costs, which means it's, it could be 10, 
but it might be 11, could be nine. That's the problem, but at least with activity-based costing, I think you can see that we're getting a closer match between those indirect manufacturing costs and the product that we are trying to cost or the service. Any questions? Yeah, when you come, yeah go ahead. Uh, going back to the previous slide uh, in the demerits, can we uh, just, can you go back? Yeah. Uh, what? So when you say some arbitrary allocation continues, what are those like? The arbitrary. arbitrary means guesses. Okay. So is there a better system? I that say does not this. Guess? Pardon me? Is there a better uh, costing no. system that does not use arbitrary uh, allocation? No. no, that's the problem. We can never get away with that. That's indirect manufacturing costs. I can't measure my indirect costs, electricity. I have to assign it in an arbitrary way. I have to get, okay, how much total electricity and how many times is this activity going to be performed? So I'm estimating at the beginning of the year the total cost and I'm estimating the total number of times the activity is performed, just like I did in job costing. Only in job costing, I only did it with one big pool, a million, and one activity-based direct labor or direct labor hours. Now I'm using 10, 20 pools 10 20 but in each pool at the beginning of the year i have to estimate how much i think it's going to be in that what are going to be the total electricity costs next year depending on the production the production manager says we're going to do 500 desks or 500,000 desks okay let's estimate how much electricity that would cost us that's an arbitrary you see what i mean it's not exact then we say okay what drives the electricity? Oh, machine hours. Okay, how many machine hours are we going to use for those 500? Well, the 500,000 desks is arbitrary. Now we have to say, how many machine hours? Well, the engineers would say, and some of your engineers, you would say an hour, an hour and a half. You know what I'm getting at. Another one would say, oh, no, 45 minutes. So we have to come up with some number. That's what it means by arbitrary allocations. Never will we ever get it exact. We cannot measure how much, well, maybe electricity was consumed by this product, by this machine to produce this product. It's not worth the effort to measure it. As long as we're close, and you're going to learn this in management, managerial accounting, and we'll talk about it later, as long as we're within three to four, five percent of being accurate, we're doing a good job. Okay. We're never going to be accurate in anything we do in management. When you estimate whatever you want to estimate in the future, you do the best job with the best information you have, but you're going to be high. You're going to be low. You might be right on some time. You're going to be high, basically. You might be low. But as long as you're within a couple of percentages, and that's what I said about traditional job costing. I produced this desk 100. I knew that 80% of it was direct. 40 was material, 40 was labor. The 20, as long as I'm within 5%, I would only be out 1% of the total cost of the desk. You understand what I'm saying? You got those numbers? But today, if I did it, when the overhead is 40% and I'm out 5%, now I, I'm out quite a bit. More and more. Okay. Any questions? Now, this is all new, so let's talk about it. Let's answer these questions. Come on, Hessa. Let's get more people in here. All right. Finish this off. A little bit of a time for a break. Um, it may, I just want you to get your head wrapped around all of this. Understand the problem with indirect costs. Um, and an indirect cost has to be allocated. So, we first of all, have to accumulate it. We accumulate the electrical costs. We don't actually accumulate them. We estimate that for the year. And then we allocate it 
to the products. All right, let's see what we got. I forget what these questions were. The first step in activity-based costing is to assign manufacturing overhead costs for each activity. Identify and classify the major activities involved in the manufacturer of specific products. Identify the cost driver that has a strong correlation. Now, of course, all of these are steps. What's the first step? Yeah, yeah, first step is identify and classify. And then track the cost too, good. The last question, and we'll see who we have as a winner. The last step in activity-based costing is to assign manufacturing overhead for each activity cost pool to products, identify and classify the major activities involved, identify the cost driver that has a strong correlation. Okay, what do we have? Time's up. Good. Yeah, yeah. I can understand why you. Did you already do this, Farah? Your your voice is. Uh, it's not clear, sir. Your voice. I'm just trying it now, Yanni. Okay. Did you do this yourself? Did you do all three? Of them? Yes, I did it by myself just now. Oh, just now. You should have led the class. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, Okay, I'll leave you. All right, read the question then. Uh, no, uh, sir, you read the question. You're shy, are you? Yes. <laughs> All right, make it larger. I can't see it too well. Okay, no. good. Nancy Lake owns a small department store in a metropolitan area for 20 years. The accountant has assigned overhead to the various departments within that store. Women's apparel, men's apparel, that's clothing. Apparel is clothing, cosmetics, houseware, shoes, and electronics. Based on, yeah, based on the basis of employee hours worked, Nancy, Daughter is an accounting student locally would suggest that she should consider using activity based costing. All right. So please come up with a cost driver. That's all. So you read it from now on. Farrell, what's the cost driver? What options do you have? We have place in order. Oh, you're going to have to turn up your sound. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Good. Yes, placing order. So I think yeah. uh, number of orders and uh, volume of order. Okay, click on it. What other choices do we have? Number of orders, dollar volume, hmm. number of customers. Okay, I think that's a good bet. Everybody else agree? Yes, sir. All right, try the next one. Now, some of these are going to be, here's the word arbitrary, which means I might think a little different than you or uh, Mr. Wiley is thinking different than you. It's arbit Some of them are not exact. Some is arbitrary. Okay, next one. Stocking merchandise. No, I don't think I would be the dollar number, sales. Number, number of orders. Number. This one? I think maybe square feet yeah. stocking merchandise. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> OK, let's go to the next. Uh, Dr. Why not waiting the number on of customers. packages? Now that wouldn't be square feet. Waiting on customers wouldn't be square feet. Yes, it, it I don't know what they mean by waiting on customers, but. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, customers. No, not, uh, yeah. Number of customers. Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, dollar volume sale. More sales, more you're waiting on them, I guess. Okay, janitorial. Okay, that one's easy. 
the traffic through area. Can you still hear me? Yeah, okay. Janitorial and maintenance. Uh, click on it and see what our choices are. Yeah, square, square feet. feet. Yeah. Ah, okay. Number of square feet. Okay. Training employees. Number of new employees. Hey, wow, very good. Number of new employees. Administration, now that's probably employees. Just, yeah, the more employees, more administrative costs. Good. The dollar volume of business. And advertising. No, what did you get for no, administrative? Number of employees. Dollar volume of sales, maybe, or, or campaigns. Number of ad campaigns. Are we talking administration? What are we talking about? Oh, okay. No, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, for the administrative, no, no. So I think um, uh, number of employees uh, and new, new employees. employees. Yeah. Would it be dollar of volume of business? Yeah. Okay, administration, advertising, and marketing campaigns. Ad campaigns. Yeah. I don't know. What are the choices? Uh, number of orders, number of that, number of customers, square it feet. It might be number of packages sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's confusing. Uh, accounting, I, it would be sales, dollar sales. No, it would be more dollar sales. Advertising, advertising might be more dollar oh. volume of sales, yeah. The more the items that you sell more of should pick up more of the marketing costs because you're you're marketing to the outside world all your products. So therefore, if you're going to indirect costs and marketing, you should allocate it to the product that has the most sales. So in OK, you got a dollar volume of sales accounting and legal services. Well, that, that would be. Customer, the number of dollar volume of sales. Um, OK, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe you have here a number of ad campaigns. Well, maybe that would be advertising number of ad campaigns and dollar volume of sales would be accounting and legal service. OK. Yeah, OK. And the last one, dollar uh, number of package. That's easy, isn't it? Okay, let's see what we got wrong. Uh, F administrative, we got it wrong. We did. That's all. Uh, What's that? Stocking. For, for, for oh, B, stock. it's number of order, uh, dollar volume of order. For what? Stocking yeah. merchant. No, for B. Uh, yes, stocking merchant. Yeah. Yeah, B. Okay. Okay, try that. And down be here, administration, we said number of employees. What's wrong with that? Oh, number of employees, business volume of business. Yeah, one more down. Number of employees and dollar volume of business. There, probably. We did not All right, see if Mr. Wiley agrees with that. We got it right. What is that? Okay. Oh, what the heck is he doing here? Um, Never. Let's move on. No, it's dollar volume of order. Okay. Uh, let's put it individual order. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. So you get an idea of what a cost driver is. Now let's start punching the numbers. Go to three. Okay. Question two. All right, here we have two products, and this is Sheffield Creations, sells window treatment shades, blinds, awnings, both commercial and residential. So we have two. Following information, commercial revenues, Mafi Mosquila. Okay, direct materials, we got for both. Direct labor, we got for both overhead costs. 
Now, how did they assign that overhead cost? We don't know. Uh, but they say that residential is losing 20,000. So let's go down and see how they allocated overhead costs. Wait, go up a bit. Yeah, no. okay, the controller is concerned about the residential product line. She cannot understand why that line is not more profitable given the installations of windows to complex residential customers. In addition, the residential climate ba client base resides in close proximity to the company's office, so travel costs are not that expensive on a per client visit. Travel costs would be indirect. Visit to the residential customer. As a result, we've decided to take a closer look. And obviously the overhead costs are, if you go up, you'll see that they assign the overhead costs 236 and five, no, no, uh, 86,800 for commercial and 165,000 for residential. So you put those two together, you get something like what? 150, 86, eight, well, yeah, about 150. So now they're taking that 150 overhead costs, go down. Okay, Farrah, just go down. Yeah, they take in 150. Look, oh, oh no, it was 106, 250. Okay, go up. <laughs> okay, they've taken it and broken it into three pools. 86.8 is scheduling and travel. 105 is setup time. Supervision is 80,000. And they tell us for travel and scheduling, it's the hours of travel. And for setup time, it's a number of setups. And supervisory is direct labor costs. Okay, so now we need, we need the estimated use of the cost drivers. So go down and you see that commercial has 750 scheduling and travel, 650 residential. Okay, Matthew Muscula, that together is the total. Setup time is 5250, so that's 750. But they didn't give us direct labor, so we have to go back up. What's direct labor cost? 60,000 is based on direct labor costs. From, from the first one. Very first good, one. Fatma, so go back oh, up oh. now. Who's doing that? Go back up. Right, now look at the direct labor costs. 110 and 290. What you have to do is add those two together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 400. Okay. Yes, yes, Jamaica. Okay, let's, yeah, let's go down to the problem and you'll see it's easy. Yeah, 290 plus, right. Okay, go down to the problem. All right, let's go overhead rates. So scheduling and travel. So how see, much money is the scheduling and travel? Is um, 86, 400. Okay, go up. 86, yeah. 400? Is it 86, 400? Uh, for me, for me, it's 86, sorry. Okay, go up. Go up. Farah. Okay, 86, 800. Okay, okay, now how many times is that going to be done? Go down and add these two together. You have to add 750 and 650 so because you need the number. Yeah, you need no. the number of times it's going to be performed in a year. And then divide it by this? Ewa, yeah, no, no, divide that. No, it's the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 one minute. Very good. I have kids here, that's why. Seven and four. Six, now you add 750 and 650, which is what? 1300? Uh, 1400. Is it? Right. 13, yeah. 6.2, so put 6.2 is the um, over no, per hour. No, 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 no. Uh, no, sir, uh, it it's was wrong. 14,000. It, 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 it should be 1400. It's two number, not point. 
Okay, well, let's see. Um, uh, 750, yeah. 1400. Um, okay, so it's 86, 800 divided by 14. I thought she did that. That's 14,000. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no. no. Yeah, that's right. That's yes. right. Sorry. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's right. 62, yeah, we had the right. Okay. We just moved the point over one. Okay. Do the same now for setup time. Okay, just tolerate me. Setup time was. Yeah, very good. Now, how many times? 750. 750. Right. Okay. Right, yes. 140? Okay. Now, supervision, wait a minute now. We're going to have to add the direct labor costs. So go back up. Shall we have one third? Uh, what she have? You got 60,000 divided by, you must add 110 and 290. That's 400,000. 400,000. So 60,000 60, divided by 400,000. Yeah. 60,000. Right. Yeah. Divided by four hundred. Right. You added the two together, right? No, it couldn't be one hundred fifty. Add it so, or divide it. Divide. No, no. Four hundred thousand. You added the two direct costs. Four hundred thousand into sixty thousand is not one hundred fifty. Um. That is um, not the Okay, the direct labor costs are 110 plus 290. So that's 400,000, okay? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Okay, 400,000. Now go down and how much was supervisory costs? Six, go down. No, no, up. Six. Yeah. Okay, 60,000. 60, so that's the cost. Divide the 60,000 by 400. No, it's the opposite. Ah, opposite. Opposite. Okay. Well, let's uh, divide sixty thousand by four hundred. Yeah, by the activity. You know okay. Divide by divide four hundred thousand. Hundred. By. Oh my God. There you go. Fifteen cents. <laughs> Big difference, right? Eh? Yes. <laughs> Point one five. Okay. Great. Yeah, I'm the okay. Let's go down now. Now you got to cost the commercial and you got to cost the residential. So, what you want to do is okay. Now, what you do is you take the number of times it's performed in commercial times the rate. How so will the, you know how many times? From uh, here, right? Us, they have to tell us right there. 750. Yeah, 750. Right. 50. They have to tell you that. Times. Okay. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. 750 yeah. times. How many times did it? Uh, yeah. No, no, the 750 cost. is the number of times. What's the rate? No, no, what's the rate? Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Hey, wow. this... You got it right there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now you got it. Okay, so go back. You want to do residential now? Wait a minute. Yes. You can do residential. Same way. Yes. It's the same rate, sixty-two, but residential is six hundred and fifty times. Six hundred and fifty multiplied by uh, which one? <laughs> I forgot. This one. Go down. You want the rate? Yes, yeah, rate, rate, صح. Sixty-two. Sixty-two. There you go, 40,300. All right, go to the next activity. Setup time, the rate was 140 hours per setup. How many setups did we do for commercial? 500. Oh, no, 500. no, 500. 500. Right, 70,000. There's something that seems like a lot of overhead. No, there's something wrong here. There's something wrong here. Something wrong? 
Now, well, well, let's go through and find out. I thought the total overhead was only 400,000 already. Okay, keep going. No, 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 no. You got a two, no, 250, eh? Right. By 140 equals. Uh, 35. Oh, yeah, and the last one is pennies, so it's 15, so that's why it'd be cheap. Okay, now do the supervision. But we don't have the cost, from, right? From the direct cost. Up, up. Yeah, up. yeah, sure you do. You have 110 direct labor cost for commercial. Okay. Um, 110. 100. Yeah. Times yeah. 0.15. Zero, come. Five. Five. One, one, five, five. Right. 16,500. Okay. All right, this might work out. And 290 times 0 0.015. 43. Wow, that's a lot. All right, now add those up. Total amount assigned, 43, 35. Is plus, okay. Right. Right, 16, 5. Okay. We have it. 133. Okay, add the other ones. <laughs> no, I think there's something wrong here. Okay. No, no it's fine. Okay. Now look. Look at 133 commercial and 118 residential. What were they charging up above? Go back to the top of the question. What was the accountant doing? The accountant was charging 86.8 to commercial and 165 to residential. Whereas you just figured that residential was 133. And no, residential is 118. And commercials 133. So you see with activity, you're getting a fair accommodation. Is there any more to this problem? Okay, we'll go next. Well, let's see. Is there anything more? Ah, oh, there's something more. Operating income. Okay. Okay. So commercial. Go back up to commercial. Okay. All the way up. Uh, yeah. All the way up. All the way up. Okay. okay. Revenue 320. Put that in. Revenue is 328. Uh, where is uh, this one? Yeah. They yes. want profit now. So you want revenue. Minus. Okay. Uh, Minus. Uh, 40,000. Minus 40,000. Minus 40,000. That's materials. Minus labor, 110,000. Okay, now go down and what's the new overhead? Go down. The new overhead was one minus 133,000. And the profit is 37,8. So now do the same thing with residential. Take the revenue minus direct material, direct labor, and the new overhead. Yes. Okay, and minus 165 also? Go down, what was it? Minus what? The, the new number. The new number. See, it says residential lost 20,000. Well, now, with the way we're costing it now, um, subtract, what's that new number? 118,800. Oh, subtract. 
hundred one one eight eight zero zero. Right. Okay. What do you got? Oh, they didn't lose twenty thousand. This way is twenty six two. They were manufacturing, and you got the numbers right. Very good. Very good, Farah. Any questions, anybody? So you see how we line the ducks up. <laughs> yeah. You got to get the activities, the total activities, the number of times it's going to be produced. Get the rate, and then go back and assign it. Okay, question three. Boy, you're moving right along here. All right, this one's a big one, I believe. Some yeah. uh, someone else will do it uh, because I'm really slow. Because you're what? I'm slow. <laughs> you're not. No, you, you are doing fine. Uh, you are doing absolutely fine. fine. I'll I'll read it for you. Okay. No, no, go up, go up. Okay. A Bramble industry, everybody has different numbers, I believe, has three activity cost pools and two products. It estimates production, uh, 200 units of product that and 1,000 units of product that. Wait a minute, I just had a thought. Now, in these assignments, I give you three opportunities, in, in these in-class things, I give you three opportunities to get it right. But when I give you an assignment, you only have one opportunity, so... Go slowly on the assignment, okay? Victor, uh, put it for two two times. Well, maybe I will, Fatma. We'll see how you do. And if you want another time, I'll give you another time, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, so let's go back to this one. We have three activity cost pools and two products, okay? Everything is an estimate. So they estimate production of 2,000 units of that product and 1,000 units. So they're going to produce 3,000 products, two of this and one of that. Having identified as cost accounting pools and cost drivers, they have to give you this, you know that. Bramble accumulates the following data. So can you move down, Farrah, a bit? All right. On the left, you have the annual overhead data. Now they give it to you. They give you the three pools. Machine setup, machining, and packing. They give you the drivers, setups, machine hours, and orders. And they tell you the estimated overhead of machine setup, 21,500. Of machining, 123,250. Packing, 29,7. On the right hand side, they're telling you now the estimated use. Now, notice that. 22 is for product and 21 or uh, product BC 113 and 21 is for AD 908. You add those two together, that's where they get the 43. So sometimes they may not give you in the problem the total. You have to add those two together. But here they give you the total expected use 43 and it's broken down 22 and 21. Expected use of machine hours 4,930 and that's broken down into 1120 and 3810 and packing is broken 55 okay any questions on that that's basically the information they have to give you now the only difference is they may not give you the total like the 43 and the 4930 but you can get that by adding the two together do you understand what i'm saying yeah we add this two. yeah that's what it is okay so go down now we have it all. And all they're asking us now is estimated overhead. Well, that's easy. They already told us. So go back up for machine setup. Estimate, copy that 21.5 and estimated overhead. So just copy those three down there. That's it. How much is going to be for machining? That's it. Capiche, yeah. And how much for pricing or packaging? Good. Good. Now, yeah, you can add those together. Good. Good. 
All right, now go up. It says estimated use of the cost driver. Well, we've got that. No, no. And this one, this one. Oh, yeah, you need the total here. To get the rate, you always need the total. There's where you're going to make your mistake. All right. That's why I'm doing this problem. You're doing this problem. You get that total. Make sure they don't trip you up like that. Whoever sets up your exam. <laughs> now, you want it per activity. Divided. Ewa, divided. You got it. Alhamdulillah. Well, that's a nice, neat number, 500. Okay. Right. Twenty-five. Okay. So that's how you're going to assign that total overhead of 174,450. Before we would do it with just machine hours directly. You're going to break it into three and three drivers. And then you're going to look at how many drivers are consumed. Well, they already told you that. Okay, let's check your numbers. Very good. Let's see. You should be right. Yeah. Are we right? Yes. Have you got that green stripe? Let's see. Yes. All right, so where's that green stripe? Okay, I'll take your word for it. Let's go down. All right. Now, look at, we're talking about BC113. Yeah, we'll do same, but we'll take uh, this one. Right? Exactly. You take 22 by the rate that you did. No, not that. Not that. Oh, my God. No, no, just the number of times. 22, I think. Is, what are they asking us for? The number of times? No, no, here, here, here. Okay. Use of cost driver per product. Okay, was it 22 times? Yes, 22. Yeah, times the rate. What's the rate you got? Go back up. What's the rate? No, no, not 22. Not 22 this. times 500. 500. Right. Uh, we'll it's going to be set up 22 times and it's 500 times the time. Times 22. Here, right? That sounds about right. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, take that number and put it under cost assigned. <laughs> okay. So here uh, it will be okay. two, here it will be 500, right? That's right. Yes. Okay. okay. There we go. Uh, 11,200. And the number of times is what? 25? Okay. Divided by 25, right? No, my multiply. <laughs> Uh, each no. one of them. No, each no, one of them checking. costs 1,120 and I do it 25 times. Yes. Okay. No, no, I was checking you, sir. <laughs> You're going to check? I was checking you know it or not. <laughs> 150 times, whatever that rate was. 54. 54? Okay. Any question, anybody? You following along? Different numbers, but you got the idea. Okay, there you go. Now add those three up. I don't know what is this. No, no. Add add those three. Eleven thousand twenty-eight and eighty-one, and put it in. Okay. You already got eighty-one there. Just add eleven thousand. Okay. Eleven thousand. Okay. Eleven plus twenty-eight equals. 30, okay, plus eight. <laughs> You're going to make a mistake. Eight, one, no, no, come on. No. 11,000, you think that's right? Okay, let me see. 20, 28, 39, 47. Ah, you're right. You're right. Okay, 
That's the amount of overhead that is assigned to BC down. Now, when you move over, you got the other product. Yeah, but here it's it's empty. Yeah, go move over. Yeah, I tried, but it's not going. Oh, what's the heck's happening here? Small. Maybe you have to plug it uh -huh. in. Okay. Uh -huh. Start putting. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Use of the cost driver for AD 908. So just go up. Okay. Cost driver. 21. And these ones? No. The okay. use of the cost the last, driver. The last 21. Yeah. 21. Yeah. The actual 21. Okay. Five hundred. So it, okay, it here, doesn't matter. You see, you don't have to go there. It's the same rates as you used before. Yes. Yeah. Good. You got it. Now you just got to get the number of times it was used. You're getting it. Very good. And get the last one. And then do your multiplications. Yes. Oh. Where? I think if we use an Excel sheet, it will be much easier. Absolutely. Now you understand how the Excel sheet was a, a gift from God to the accountants, yeah. <laughs> or to managers. You basically, you drag it and it would come as a formula and you can use Alt equal to. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember I said at the beginning when we did traditional cost accounting, I didn't have computers. Never had computers 25, 30 years ago. And now all, that's why all of this has come out. Thanks to Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. Yeah, we couldn't even use a calculator when I did my exams. Uh, calculators had just come out. Texas Instrument sold for 700 Canadian dollars way back then. There would have been Lotus 123. Eh? Lotus 123, the precursor to Excel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, now you're getting the idea, and now you see how. With activity-based costing, we can really get down. Now it's cumbersome. Look at look at the overhead. Now you have uh, forty-seven one to one product and one twenty-seven three fifty to another product because it it had more activities. Okay, more volume. The same activity-based rate because we take the overhead and divide it by the total activities. But then when we sign the activities to the products. They're getting a different amount. So let's see. Did your numbers correct? Check that yeah, one. Uh, already done. Already done. Okay. Is that the end of the problem? No, there oh. is one question. Still one. Uh, uh, oh, unit. Divided cost, by number easy. of units. Absolutely. That's easy. Yeah, this total uh, divided yeah. by number. And they said what? 2,000? Here. Okay, and you number one. of units are are how much? I don't know. How much. We have to check. No, no, yeah, you got to go up. I think this it was one, 2000. Right? Yeah, I have to 2, add 1000 for 113 and 1000 for the other. So you yes, simply yes. divide the overhead by that. And now I have it on a unit price, and basically that's what we work with direct material, so, unit cost, direct labor. I'll divi unit. Divided by this, overhead. sir. Yeah, by 2000. No, no, this number by 2000, right? Hey, yeah, yeah, the overhead. It would be $87 and 0.225. How many decimal points does he want? Okay, $87.23. Yeah, good. And the other one is a thousand, so just get it. Uh, I'll tell you right now, it's twelve seven thirty five. Okay. Twelve seven three five. No, no, I I don't. Twelve seven thirty five. Okay. Three five. See the calculator God gave me is quicker than that calculator and better. Just as yes. good. One twenty seven point three five. Yes, Alhamdulillah. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. You did really well. Finish uh -oh. that quicker uh -oh. than I wait. So you're saying there's a problem? Uh -oh. Is the answer right? One more time. 
four, seven. No, no, yeah, a thousand, twelve seventy five. Equal. How come? Ah, okay. Now we're cooking up here, fat. All right. That's activity-based cost. 